Hi, my name's Joe Foy. I'm the stormwater manager for the city of Elkhart. Today we're going to look into the complexities of water in a watershed. I say that because we all live within a watershed, whether you know it or not, and our watersheds behave a lot differently today than they did in the past. And through this demonstration, I hope to show you a little bit more of why they act the way they do and why we have some of the water problems that we have today around our rivers and streams. So before me, I have what we call a watershed model. This model is set up to show you what it looked like before anybody lived here. So this is, this is back pre-colonization. Uh, we just had the rivers, the streams, and the forests, and the prairies, and the wetlands all around them. So when it would rain in a system like this at that time, we had the wetlands that were basically sponges, and hence they're modeled by sponges today in our model. So when it would rain really hard, this is the rainmaker, and it's going to dole out the water as quickly here as it will in some of the future rain events I'm going to show you. But in this particular event, we can see how the water got soaked up by the sponge or the wetland. The wetland still released it to the river. Small parts of the river may have flooded, but the upper areas stayed dry. This is because these wetlands soaked in as this water is coming down very quickly uh, during our heavy rain events not all of it can soak into the ground. So what the wetlands do is help hold that water while it's soaking in and then release it at a controlled rate into the rivers and streams around them. So we go from this pristine area uh, with no people around and that's not where we are today. Today, we have all of the things that come with modernization. Now we have transformed our watershed into what it might look like today. Uh, back in the early days, we built homes, as we still build today. Uh, with the homes comes many of the parts of the infrastructure that are, have a different characteristic than the wetlands, woods, and meadows. So with our houses, we have hospitals, we have hotels, we have grocery stores, we have office buildings. With all of those, come parking lots. So as you can see, the model has been transformed. We now have a modern day parking lot with a building in it. Our rainmaker is still the same, nothing has changed. We have some houses built in some of those areas overlooking the beautiful river, as well as some that are down closer to the river. And as it begins to rain now, with the wetlands being gone because we have built over them for our progress, the wetlands are gone, and now we're going to see what happens as the water hits all of the hard surfaces that it has now instead of the grasses and trees that it used to hit in the past. So now, and I pour it in just as fast and just as much water, we see the river quickly rise. We see the river flood out houses that were down on our island. We see the river take out even some houses uh, up on some of the higher river banks and all of that because the water did not get held back at all. It got pushed 100% from all the hard surfaces into the nearest water body. And when I say water body, I mean a river, a stream, a creek, or a lake, or a pond. And the water rises quickly and causes all of these problems. Okay, so now that we have seen what happens when we don't account for all of this water hitting hard surfaces, we have transformed our area once again. Policymakers over time learned that they did need to have a way to deal with this water that was coming off. The wetlands took up an enormous amount of space. What could they do in lieu of the wetlands to help slow that water down? One of the things that we have come up with uh, that we find most effective in our area is retention ponds. So now within my model, you see the rainmaker still. We still have our parking lot, but before the water from the parking lot can get to the river, it has to go through a retention pond. We see these retention ponds all around town. You may have seen one 
and thought, oh, look at that pretty little pond right next to my doctor's office or the grocery store, or it might not even have water in it. It might be just a dry depression, but you might also see pipes going out to these areas. Those pipes usually are coming from the parking lots and they take that water that is coming down and instead of just shooting it straight out to the river or stream, it goes into the pond. And we're gonna find out real quickly how that can now affect our communities downstream. So we'll take the water once again, do our heavy rain event, pour it in as fast as we can. And our retention pond captures this. It has an outlet pipe in this instance that releases the water at a steady rate to the river. And the rate that it's releasing the water at actually, as we can see now, even protects the homes in the very lowest of areas. So through just a simple modification to our building practices, we can help mitigate or slow down that water from getting out to our rivers and streams so quickly. Several years ago, the stormwater utility in the city of Elkhart purchased this model for the sole purpose of helping people better understand how water flows through our watershed and what we can do to help slow that water down and alleviate some of the possible flooding effects. This model, while expensive, is owned by the city of Elkhart and the city of Elkhart stormwater utility is more than happy to loan this to any public educators in the Elkhart County area. If you would just get a hold of me at Elkhart Public Works and Utilities, again, my name is Joe Foy. I'd be happy to share with you uh, all of the information that we have on how this model could work into the curriculum within your school. To make it a little easier, Word Scientific has even made it simpler by putting together lesson plans for educators. These lesson plans I can make available to you digitally and you can take a look and see for yourself how this could fit into your curriculum.